the hardest beat of the summer. No, for real. And like, I did ass did that. And the artist don't like how the engineer record. Mm. And he like, yo, I don't know, yo. I might need a different engineer, yo. I might, I'm about to fire you because you ain't doing that. I'm like, whoa. That's why you can't give <laughs> niggas power, like, like. Bro, you can't give niggas no power, bro, like, at all. Because shit like that. But the great outcome from working in the studio was that was where I met Shorty Shorty. You know, it was the table, the whole island. Mind you, have you ever been to Compound? It's a, it's a the, it's an island in Avon. Mm. And that island big as shit. It's big as hell. Loaded just covered in guns guns gang? guns weed like what all that shit i don't know if i'm supposed to be saying this but like it's crips everywhere it's, it's crips everywhere, everywhere. Them niggas, those niggas is worse than the military recruiting yeah it's it's no it's no at this point that's probably yeah but that's probably like the craziest thing i've seen no, but no, it no. becomes it becomes a normal you know what i'm saying yeah i'm done like yeah i turned down the all-star game and all that wow yeah you was you was firm on your decision. I was firm. You feel like that? You feel like the looking back on it was that a good decision for you? Probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> yo, we back in here for another episode, another banger, another week. And today we're talking to another person that's putting on for a city. The the nigga that's if you the nigga that the nigga that's make all the beats, to make all the hottest beats. Today we're talking to Tip Twelve. What's good, bro? Welcome to the show. Appreciate you. How you doing today? Saturday, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. Doing pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Got got a full day, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I'm here, I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. You got a busy day all day. All day. See, this all this all I'm doing, so I'm chilling. All day, I'm working. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you got to get to it. Even in most people, most people think of Fridays is turn up, you know. Yeah, okay. we do that. We do that at the end of the night. Oh but yeah. The day, throughout the day, yeah, we gonna get that money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. For the people that's watching this, they probably used to hearing your beats and your tags, but they can't really put a face to the name. Give, 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 give like a few. You don't have to say people, but like give who, who, who are you? If you had to say like two sentences. Okay, so once again, my name is Tip Twelve. Uh, I'm a music producer. I'm a DJ. I worked with the entire city, honestly, mm-hmm. from Shorty Shorty, Bound Izzy, me and Take Got Stuff, Pyrex, OTR Chaz, Duachi Tech. Mm-hmm. The list go on and on. Um, but one song that I'm really known for is Summertime Shootout. That, mm-hmm. uh, that's probably like one of my biggest songs I produce for real. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's tip 12 for you. I, I, before before we get into the background of you, I more so want to get that off the get that off the off the um, list first. That summertime that summertime song. Tell me about that and that creation. That was you there in the studio when he was creating that. I was there in the studio, okay. but I think the crazy part about that whole process mm-hmm. was just like I got I saw like one of my producers he sent me the melody he sent me the melody like the main melody okay. and I was like damn like I know what I'm gonna do with this because at the time I already owed Pyrex a club mix I'm like mm-hmm. cause he wanted that club shit and I heard it I was like oh shit like I think I'm about to make like the hardest beat of the summer no for real and like I did as did that I was mm-hmm. in the house. And mind you, like those chords in that beat, like that's those chords really represent me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. my lifestyle. Whenever I really try to explain who I am and what I do through music, it's with those chords, like those okay. melodies right there. Damn. So it's like, yeah, bro, I was in the house, I got it, and I just made the beat. Mm. And I was like, yeah. You knew instantly right after you printed it. I up. knew instantly, like be- before we even went to the studio and the song was made, mm. I was like, this song gonna be a hit. Okay. And we went to the. I actually sent it to Power. So he was like, "Yo, oh my god." <laughs> no, that's it's crazy. It's one of them beats where like first two seconds, first yeah. two seconds. Yo, you know first I mean? two seconds, bro. Especially when that when them horns come in, niggas know what time it is. No, for real. You feel me? I gave him the beat. He was just like, "Yo, this shit crazy." And then he called me minutes after that. He was like, "Yo, fuck you, know I'm Like. I'm in the house, cool. And I just made that crazy ass beat. Mm-hmm. He like, yeah, Chaz in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I think at the time he was like, man, I want to go, but like I'm sleepy. I'm like, nigga, say he was sleepy. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm ready to come pick you up. We just gonna go knock it out. Cause uh-huh. Pyrex, he be working. It was like, oh, yeah. he be working. You I know believe. What I'm saying? So I was like, man, I'm, right, I'm gonna come pick you up, bro. You ready to go to the studio? Mm-hmm. He was like, man, went to the studio. They made that song in no less than like. 25 minutes 25 minutes yeah like they didn't that they didn't take long at all but that's wow yeah he just went in there and just went crazy on on the hook like yeah this one this is the one Mm -hmm. took off from there oh 
Oh, you knew it was like. Was it like? Was it like? Um, as soon as it dropped, type thing, or was it like a? What you mean, like it's like? As far as the, as far as like as far as when it hit the streets, like was it an instant impact? Yeah. Okay. It was an instant impact. I f- probably like like that next day, couple days, like. People was already making TikToks to it. Oh, yeah. A week later, somebody got in a car accident because they was listening to the song oh, and shit like that. I think yeah, I saw so, that. I saw that yeah, shit. Yeah, it was, um, it was uh, one of his guys. I think he was in jail. He did a TikTok to the song while oh, he was hell. in there. Like, yo, the shit went viral. It did. It, it literally viral. did. It, it, it definitely did some numbers. Now, how does that feel? How does that feel as a as a producer? Like, um, no, honestly, before we before I talk about how does it feel as a producer when they were rapping on the song, like I know you, I feel like producers are the most perfectionist. Like before the artists even gets on it, you yes, know what I'm exactly. saying? Yeah. Do you feel like how do you feel how do, do you feel like they fit perfectly on the beat? Yes. Okay. Yes, like a hundred percent. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everything yeah. about the song mm-hmm. and the beat is just like perfect. perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like it's some it's it's sometimes like you might make a beat and. People think that the song is hard, mm-hmm. and you know that the artist is hard, but like, you're not too fond of the beat. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You might have a situation where like, you love the beat, and the artist might not have did what he's supposed to do on there. Mm-hmm. But this one, it was just perfect all around the board. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they're my guys, mm-hmm. and you know, they know what they're doing when they hit a beat. So it's just like, like I said, it just makes sense. Okay. It's perfect. Um, I know you didn't. I know you didn't wake up one day and want to be start producing, and next day you're producing this beat. Talk about kind of where where is this foundation? Like where did you go to high school? Um, let me see. So I know. Well, I started. I, I started making beats when I was in middle school, around like oh, twelve. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's why. That's why I got the twelve from. Mm-hmm. I was. I was doing it on my iPod. Then I got to high school. I started using the beat machine. It was I, was Band Lab even out back then? No. I don't know. How was you recording off the iPod back then? It was so so I had a beat machine and it was called Machine, but mm-hmm. like um it's 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 a company called Native Instruments and they had their own app on there too. Okay. So what you could do on the beat machine, you could do on the app too. So oh. yeah, the app was like ten dollars. I was like, Ma, let me get this app. Straight okay. got it. I've been making beats since then. Mm-hmm. And then I upgraded to the actual beat machine and then um by the time I got to like my junior senior year, I swapped over to use some like FL. Mm. But then I was really trying to figure out like, yo, what's the purpose of life? Like, why are we here? Why are we living? Like, mm-hmm. why is this girl working at McDonald's? Like, what are we doing here? Okay. Right? So I wound up having a conversation um, with one of my bar- like one of my old barbers. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he was, I was like, yo, what's the purpose of life? Like, what are we doing? And he just like, yo, you just got to do what you do best with no effort. Like, that's that's your purpose. That's why you're here. Whatever you feel like you can just do without trying, you just do a great job at it, mm-hmm. that's your purpose. Real shit. And Real I, shit. you feel me? And I sat back like, damn, like, maybe music is what I'm supposed to be doing. That was the first, like, that's what you thought of? Yeah. First? Okay. I'm like, yeah, music what I'm supposed to be doing. You ever try to yeah. spit behind the mic? Yeah, a couple songs and I got a couple songs on the top. I be I be bluffing on really like pushing like the whole like artistry shit for real because okay. I want to do it like at a you know at a perfect time because mm-hmm. I know how to record, I know how to do all that. But I know if I'm going like put some good music out there, I want to make sure I do it the right way. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? We okay. gotta get this producing and DJ stuff in order first, and okay. then we, you know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That was a kind of interruptive no, question to the no, story. No, 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 no. You good? You good? But I definitely do want to start pushing. You know, like the artistry shit one day. Okay, okay. So let's get back to let's get back to the story. You switch. You switch. You went from there. Then you switched to FL. Talk about. I know, like when I, me personally, when I first got the FL, it was like I found it. Like it was like Heaven Gates. Talk about when you first got accustomed to FL and that experience. When I first started using FL, it was hard because I'm like. The difference between like using a beat machine and then just strictly using FL is like you're just using the computer. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you can use the beat machine, but I'm just starting out. I don't even know how to do none of that. So it was it was kind of hard just trying to figure out what like how to do this and how to do that. But like I finally like I finally got adjusted to it probably like a year or two after, and it just got better and better and better. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Shit. But I do feel like eventually I'm going to probably go back into the whole beat machine thing. Cause beat I machine? Feel like, 
because you can, like I said, I can do it, but you can use more of your creativity. Yeah, because that's that, that you, shit, the beat machine compared to FL, that's like a dinosaur. Like, that's yeah, old school. It is, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you, like, I'm not just a, I'm a musician, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you're you creative, was, fuck that. Yeah, so it's like, I want to be able to, you know what I'm saying, use my hands and use my body mm-hmm. in whatever way I, you know, feel I should use it in. Mm-hmm. FL, it allows you to do that when you know how to do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you, you can always go full throttle or go harder. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Add that beat machine. Add them keys. Add mm-hmm. them piano. Don't just be like a little laptop. And do for <laughs> just, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Get creative with it. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about this journey. Uh, when you first got, with the, were you, were you, which one were you doing? Were you DJing first or were you doing the producing? The producing. First? I was producing okay. first. Yeah. Um, what was some, so you woke up one day and you wanted to be a producer. What was the first thing that you did after that? After being a producer, you said once being after, a producer. After you found out you wanted to be a producer, and you started taking steps to, steps to be a big producer. What 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 was the first thing you did? Um, I made the decision that I didn't want to play sports no more. I was going into my senior year; it was the summertime, and I was just like, "Damn, like I'm tired of this sports shit." I don't was it football? I do this? It was fo- I was football. I was on the track before that. I was doing discus. I was mm-hmm. doing the whole shot put thing. What the hell is shot put? That's the, you know, they had a ball right here. And they oh, hell no. You like was that. throwing them? Yeah, I was throwing them. Okay, G. I was doing all okay, that. Okay, you got them. You got them. You got them on. You know what I'm saying? Big, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, I was just, I, I got to a point where I started doing all that, and I was just, like, tired. Mm. But I kind of didn't want to do it no more. And I'm like, yo, like, I don't even know this is what I want to do. I started leaning more towards music. And before senior year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do one more year of football. And I ain't playing sports no more. Wow. I did that one year. And then my coach asked me, he was like, yo, you want to be in the All-Star game? I was like, nah. He was like, what? Yeah, I'm done. Like, yeah, I turned down the All-Star game and all that. Wow. Yeah. You was, was firm on your decision. I was firm. You feel like that? You feel like looking back on it, was that a good decision for you? Probably not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt like, you know, one more game probably wouldn't have hurt, you know, to, you know, to, to close out like that. But. It was still worth it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm here now. Okay. But I know because, you know, after that, you know, when you were saying you got like half day. Mm-hmm. So. You only in there. You leaving, you leaving class like 11. Yeah. Your, yeah. Day, your day is over like 11, 11, 30. Mm-hmm. And then like how my schedule was set up at, at the, my two classes, I had lunch. Mm-hmm. So right at the lunch, I'm leaving straight out to school, hop on the bus, go home. Mm-hmm. And I would dead ass meet beats from when I got home, probably around like 2 o'clock. All the way to like eleven o'clock at night. Jeez, I was putting, I was putting the work in. That was the first days. That's what you was doing. Yeah, shit. That's okay, what I was doing, and then years at the started networking. You know, what I'm saying going to different studios, and then it was up from there. Mm. Talk mm-hmm. about talk about some of the ways that you built those connections, because a lot of a lot of these up and coming producers don't understand. They think they're gonna get in that first studio session and get paid for it and shit like that. You really gotta like. It's a it's it's definitely a gamble, mm-hmm. but it's but it's possible. Like you actually got to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it, it never hurt to really reach out to people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it never hurt to just DMs in mind be like, you know, let's work, let's do this. And if they want to work, y'all build from there, and you just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Now I know I'm always speak on this. I started working at um at Studio Compound. Oh yeah. At one point, mm-hmm. I'm familiar. But. Before I started working there, I always wanted to go there because I'm like, yo, like, you know, they got they got a heavy hit, they got heavy hitters in there, they got yeah, artists the in there, you know what I'm saying? It's a nice studio. I'm like, yo, like, I want to go here and I want to be a part of that team. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, me not knowing the name of the studio, where was that, none of that, my brother Static hit me up, mm-hmm. Static Six, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, pull out the compound and let's cook up, let's work. Shit. I'm like, who is this nigga and who's compound? But like, <laughs> You wasn't me? tapped in at all. Nah, like you feel me? I was like I was like somewhat tapped in because before that, you know, I was working with the Creek. I was working with the Creek Boys. Okay. So that gave me a little bit of buzz. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But with him hitting me up saying that and not really knowing, I hit him. I was like, you know, what studio is this? He showed me the studio. I'm like, oh, it's the one I wanted to go to. Like that's crazy. No, for real. Yeah. That's nice. He invited me there, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's all she wrote, bro. Everything yeah. went up from there. Uh huh. Everything. Talk about your experience working there. Like, just um, just was working there. Dang. The experience working there, it, I had a lot of ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I made a lot of money. 
But I dealt with a lot of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Can we cuss on you? We, we can curse? Yeah, you can cuss. Oh, right. I said like shit like four times. Oh, shit. You probably did. <laughs> well, fuck. But. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Just dealing with a lot of bullshit from all this. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, mm-hmm. you know, Compound is in the hood. Yes, So it it's like. You got to deal with street niggas. That's you know what I'm saying? They, they, they don't want to pay this. They don't want to pay that. They like, yo, do an hour for this, that, and third. I'm like, nigga, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You better pay the full price. <laughs> have, <laughs> like, you ever, have you ever had a nigga, like, instead of paying you the hours, he, he tried to give it to you in weed? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> All the time, I'd be like, I don't smoke weed. Damn. <laughs> I don't smoke. You, you, you got to give me the money, bro. Damn. Niggas do it all the time. Um, but the great outcome from working in the studio was that was where I met Shorty Shorty. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because mind you, that was a time where um, the D1 was a thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I was working with Shorty Shorty there. Um, I ran in, around the time, I ran into Pyrex there one time. That's all right. Um, we didn't, at that time, we didn't really know each other from a can of paint. Mm-hmm. But I ran into him there. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when me and Shorty Shorty started building a lot more. Started getting flown down Atlanta. We started working, getting some shit done. And yeah, that's how she wrote. No, for real. That's hard. That's yeah. hard. And it's shout out, shout out Studio Compound. Shout, shout out, out Studio my man Compound, Red. for real. Shout out my man Static Six. I don't know yeah. them, but shout out to them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk about, I want to talk about, um, you've been in the studio with private recording with a lot of artists. Um, talk, talk about some, some of the weird things that you've seen. Like, it's kind of like a side question, but like the weird shit you've seen. Like, it's like far as like in the studio. Yeah, like when niggas be doing that's like yo, that's a little weird. Like, oh man. Like I don't know. Like I've seen a nigga that be like yo, I gotta eat like a couple strawberries before I get in the booth. Like weird shit, shit like that. Damn. Um. <laughs> no, for real. Let's see. Probably one of the, like the craziest things that I've seen. Um, I feel like this is normal though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Somebody, somebody be like yo, hold on, yo. I go pop a quick perk real quick before I go in the studio. Y'all need to be feeling. Her academic is going crazy Yo, in Baltimore. It's insane. It's, it's crazy. insane. And I might, you feel me? I'd have even seen certain shit where I might be in the studio and the artist don't like how the engineer record. Mm. And he like, yo, I don't know, yo. I might need a different engineer, yo. I might, I'm about to fire you because you ain't doing that. I'm like, whoa. That's why you can't give <laughs> niggas power. Like, like, bro, you can't give niggas no power, bro, like at all. Because shit like that. It's like, that's probably like, the most craziest shit I've seen in the studio. Like, I feel like there's like like you'll see crazy shit if you're not used to it, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like normal. It it come, like it comes with the environment that you're working in. You know what I'm saying? Understand. Like mm-hmm. uh, I feel like the craziest thing I've seen was, and this is like new to me. I walked in the studio. I was at Compound, mm-hmm. and just a, a studio full of crip niggas in there. Crips. The table, the whole island. Mind you, have you ever been to Compound? It's an it's a it's island in Abram. Mm-hmm. And that island big as shit. It's big as hell. Loaded, just covered in guns. Guns, gang? Guns, weed, like, what? all that shit. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but, like, yeah, it's oh, covered with all that. And I stopped. I was like. Crips in Baltimore? It's crazy. Oh, shit. It is Crips in Baltimore. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. It's Crips everywhere. It's, it's Crips everywhere. everywhere. Them niggas, those niggas is worse than the military recruiting. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's no at this point. That's probably, yeah, but that's probably, like, the craziest thing I've seen, no, but no it problem. becomes, it becomes normal. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's what it's the lifestyle they live, it's what they do. It's, you know, it's how they gotta move. And I do have one question. This is something that's happened to me, and I just want to know if it's happened to you. Where a nigga was, you was recording a nigga, and like, why would the nigga was recording? Like he he had a gun, and he was really like, why recording? He was like, yeah, like. You seen that shit? Like, oh yeah, that's normal. That's yeah, a nigga that's recording normal. with the gun. What do you think about yeah. that though? Um. It do, it does make you know make me a little nervous sometimes. <laughs> now if I now if I see he like doing a little too much, mm-hmm. I let him know. I hit the button. Hey, look, I know you just having fun with that mode, but just you know calm it down a little bit. Right. I'm like, all right, I got you, I got you, I got you. Then you might just do a little keep the gun down here and some <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? And then they fuck around and play with the laser <laughs> while they doing the gun. I'm like, boy, that's a, yo, yeah. that's literally the craziest shit ever. Like, yo, that's it's, really it's wild. That's yo, you. Will, you will see some shit in the studio. That's like, crazy. If, if you if you've been an engineer for a very long time, mm-hmm. yeah, you see some things. Mm-hmm. That shit it just become normal. It was like <laughs> all right, like the first time, um, the first time I 
probably like work with somebody one on one. He had a gun. Was probably like it was in compound, mm-hmm. and this is actually this funny moment. It was actually uh, Jug. Rest in peace, Jug. Mm-hmm. It was um, I was in a session with Jug, and he was recording. And then like he just he, like he he was you know making sure like you know that the shit was was clean it had nothing in the head. Mm-hmm. So once he did it, I like stopped. <laughs> like I like locked up. I was like, God, what is this nigga about to do? The whole time <laughs> he just you know he just making sure the shit good or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you know like I said after that, I was like, man, fuck it. These niggas ain't doing nothing. They gonna do nothing to you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They don't they don't look at you as no threat. You know what I'm saying? No, if anything, they look at you. It's like nigga, you you the you the magician bringing all this shit together, you know. Exactly. You know, if anything, they cherish you more than you know. what I'm saying. Exactly. Um, let's talk about more producing about when you first started getting around. Tell me about the time that the, the what was going like about the time when you first started selling your beats. Like, how much did you sell your first beat for? I sold my first beat for twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is like. But this was like 10th grade. I was for like 15 around the time. That was your first beat you sold, $25. $25, yes. Do you remember, do you remember was, it, was it hard? Was it a hard beat? It probably was. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just remember selling it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny because around the time, you know, the person knew that I was young. Mm-hmm. But he was just like, yo, anybody else? He said, don't ever sell your brace. Don't ever sell your beat that low. Mm-hmm. And I started selling beats for 50 and then, you know, started going up from there, of course. When do you, when do you feel like is the right time... To, to change your price from 50 to $75? Like, what do you think is appropriate time? I don't know. I feel like it's all in, I feel like it's all in what you believe you're worth. Mm. But it's also, um, I think it also comes with a certain demand too. Mm. Like, I feel like you can raise your price to 75 or 100, whatever you want to raise it to. You feel me? But at the same time, it's like if nobody's ever bought a beat from you or buying beats from you or, you know, or like believing your worth for what you do. I don't even say believing your worth. Or if they just kind of like not putting the money into it, yeah, yeah. just leave it leave it at where you had it at first. Mm-hmm. And then when you start to see something off of it and then you get more, you know, you get more accolades, more wins, then you cut up the score. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, when do you, um, okay. So this is this is kind of like I know we n- neither of us would know this on this question, but I think as a producer, I feel like you would have more expertise. Um, if you had to hit up Metro Boom, how much you think Metro Boom would charge you for a beat right now? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. E- easily. 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 Okay. If not a hundred thousand, probably eighty thousand. <laughs> eighty thousand. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's before we even try to clear it to get it out. Yeah, real shit. Jeez. Real shit. How much? So how much you think it's going to take to get the beat from Metro? How much you think it's gonna take? No, I'm talking about like the whole the whole process, like clearing it and getting it out and buying the beat. Uh that could take months. You know what I'm saying? Take months and months and months. You buy the beat, you mm. know what I'm saying? And then once you buy the beat, you know what I'm saying, you probably gotta see if he liked the song, you know what mm. I'm saying? And, my, and then not only that, if you gonna buy the beat for that much, I hope you're spending at least a quarter or half of that amount on the song and studio time no, and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's it all it all it all come with time. It just take time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I know if yeah, if I know if I put a hundred thousand into a beat, I'm gonna put another hundred thousand into that song. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no matter how long it take to blow, but that shit gonna blow. <laughs> no, for real. I feel like just as just as the economy and raises and everything gets more expensive, it's the same thing as like buying beats and like the the price of production. You know what I'm saying? It's not just sixty dollars no more back when yeah. back when niggas had the Fendi belts. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking the niggas is taxing now. Yeah, and you know we also in this, the process of inflation too. So yeah, everything going up. Everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything. So. Yeah, the beat prices is definitely gonna go up. <laughs> That's just how it go. Like, bro, in the industry now, one hundred dollars is apparently like chump change. No, for real. You give me hundred thousand now. <laughs> no, for real. real. I flip that motherfucker. Real. Okay. What was now? We already answered the question. What was the lowest you sold the beat for? What was the highest you sold the beat for? Um, highest I sold my beat for was fifteen hundred. Mm. That's yeah. that's solid. Yeah, that's solid. And right I've there. sold, but I've sold multiple at, at one time. Mm-hmm. So. I made around for like ten for probably like ten beats. I made around like fifteen thousand dollars. Add up, yeah. Shit. Add up. If um talk about talk about the did you know you were gonna 
I'm not. You don't have to talk about who you sold them to and what type of beats or. But like building a building a beat pack like that, building a beat pack like that. Did you know you were going to sell it like that much while you were making it? Like how do how does that dynamic? Um, um, how does that n- dynamic differ from just making a beat fucking around? Yeah, I honestly didn't. I didn't know. But. Um, there was a time, let me see, there was a beat I made for an artist. Uh, actually, what, uh, Shorty Shorty, that I made, the one that just went gold. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really have a set price for that, but I made that beat like six years ago. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. And like, that was before I even had a name, before I was even working with Shorty Shorty. Wow. I was still working at Lowe's, and I was like 18. You know what Whoa. I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So crazy. But I remember when I made that beat, I was like, yo. This beat gonna be a hit. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Believe in myself again. Like this shit gonna be a hit. I don't know who gonna use it. It's gonna be a hit. So you sat so you, did you sit did you sit on it this long or were you shopping it around? Uh I was still shopping it around. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, once I started working with him, that's when I just made the beat pack. I sent it to him. But it was definitely one of those beats where I didn't expect him to use. Mm-hmm. But he still wound up using it. That's that happens happened. a lot though. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot. Yeah. Talk uh, before we talk about your relationship with Shorty Shorty or your relationship, or I'm gonna ask you about your favorite people to work with. I do want to ask you um, the process of fucking being gold, getting a gold plaque. Where's the plaque at right now? I need to know. <laughs> I ain't got it yet. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on it to get shipped to the okay. house. Um, you already got a spot but, for it, huh? You already got a spot to put it up at. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause um, fuck a Grammy. That's that's better than a Grammy if you ask me. Yeah, nah, it is. It's it's, it's huge. Grammys last forever, but plaques last forever too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those plaques, those plaques is what they get you indoors. You know what I'm saying? Now I feel like with a plaque, I can go some. I can go to a, a label or a deal and be like, hey, look, I got a gold record. I done produced this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a good form of representation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, what was the question again? Said a brain fart. Uh, shit. Me too. Oh yeah, how's it feel having? Yeah, you said how's it feel oh, like yeah. being gold. I was like, yeah, what, um, like what were you doing during that day or something? You can answer that. that, that so like that day when I found out I was gold, like I actually woke up from like a long ass nap, and I just wasn't, I wasn't expecting it neither. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because for the longest, that was a song that I also didn't know was gonna go gold. I thought Bonnie and Clyde was gonna go. Gold. No, that should have went gold. It yeah, like, it's, it's going to. You know, it's it's it's, it's about to go gold real soon. It's going to. So um, I just. Woke up from a long ass nap and I got on Instagram and I seen Shorty post it and I was like, Whoa! <laughs> I was like, Let's go go. Nigga, you ain't get an email or nothing? Hell no. I thought you would have got like a text or something like from from the. Nah, you just gotta find out. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the gram. You found yeah, it on the gram? You just gotta find out. Either, That's right. either like, like I said, you just gotta find out or you just go on the website and you just, mm. like, just check for whatever artist you work with mm. to see what pop up. Okay. And lately I just haven't been doing that. So when he posted it, I was like, dang. That's hard. That's like gold. Who who the first person did you tell? Or did, did who the first person did you tell? Uh I told my peoples. Uh I told my mom boyfriend, because you know, I'm I'm at mom's mm-hmm. and um he was in the house and I was just like, yo, nigga, I just went gold. He was like mm-hmm. he was like, nah, hell no. No for it's real. It's like, hell yeah. No for real. And I showed him that shit. I was like, bro. It's official now. The world is in your hand now. Literally, like literally, I feel like that. Like the world is in my hands. Like, that's and that's great for you. And you deserve great, you deserve it. The, it's great. like it's not you didn't you didn't get it off of no fucking bullshit ass. Um, what's that beat from NLE Chopper? Shadow Flow. Yeah. No, yeah, you ain't getting no, no bullshit ass beat like that. That's no. that's a that was that's a beat that you 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 deserve that shit. You yeah. that shit. And it's like I made that shit from scratch too. Like it's mm-hmm. no other producers. I played that melody. Do you made the melody? Yeah, I played that on a piano. Mm. Yeah, even Bonnie and Clyde, I played that on the piano. Mm. Like both of those beats was made from complete scratch. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, bro. I just felt like since since I got it, I just been been on a higher frequency. You know, yeah. I know me. Uh, you know, like, I'm I'm a humble person. I don't really talk my shit too much. I just stay out the way. And, mm-hmm. You know, just do what I called to do. Okay. But now I feel like I'm that nigga now. I'm not even gonna lie to you. You just you you earned it, nigga. I'm not. Yeah. Even, nobody's here to discredit that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, what what were what were the first? Uh, what was the first? Oh, that was the question. That what what inspires like talk about your sound and your beats. Like tell me what how do you like you said your sound is you. Like hey, if it's in my house, if you had to talk about how you how you were like it's your, your sound literally based your life. But kind of like talk more about that. How do you feel like that your sound is if you had to explain it to somebody? Hmm. Um, 
I don't know. If I could just come up with a random title right now, I would just say a kid with a dream. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, because that's really what I am. Just a kid with a dream. You know what I'm saying? That just want to be the one to make, you know, make make it happen for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like even in my melodies, like, you know, it's a it's, it's a form of grit that come mm-hmm. with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a um, it's a rose in the concrete type of vibe. Like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, a lot of people ain't never made nothing happen from here. They never did it from here. Nobody in my family's never did it. But I'll be the one the where, we, where we come from. Our yeah. families don't know nothing about no gold plaques or nothing. music accolades. They they see they, they see re- go to work and retire. That's it. That's where that's where. And see. there was a point in my career where my people they was like, "Boy, you need to go get them get them get that degree and get them good benefits." And I was just mm-hmm. like, "I don't want to do that." No you know what I'm saying, real. I'm like, you know, I want to chase my dream and make it. You know, do whatever it take to make that shit work. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But that's really what that's really what my music represent. You know what I'm saying that. That that kid that just want to make it happen, just want to make a change in his in his family and in, in his community. And, that's great. And, you know what I'm saying? I just want to be the the one to do it. Okay, that's great. That, that's that's great. Um, okay, now we can get to the we can get to the other people you like working with. Tell me, tell me who are your favorite people that you like working with in the studio? Um, my favorite my favorite person right now working in the studio is Chaz. Mm, I, I, I like I like working with Chaz. Mm. I was down in Atlanta um, for like a week. We was in there like two nights in a row. And I just like working with him because some of my favorite beats, like he'll just use, but mm. it, you know what I'm saying? It makes sense. And the process is just so swift. It's so swift. It mm. ain't, no, nah, dummy, you should have did this right here. You should have put that there. Let's do this. Like, no. Nah. He lets you do your job. It's smooth. You know what I'm saying? He let me do my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, even when he done, he'll ask me, like, yo, you fuck with the song? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you think? Da, 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 da. Like, I feel feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. feel comfortable. Like, I can I can be myself. You That's know what the saying? best place to for a work environment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a vibe. It's such a vibe. Mm-hmm. That's probably my favorite person to work with. Um, now, I'm not often in the studio with a lot of people because normally every people I'm in the studio with, I just like, you know, send them beats, mm. stuff like that. You're not usually engineering. Yeah, not okay. really like engineering. Um, another person I like working with in the studio is uh, definitely Pyrex. Mm. Um, so really like Chaz and Pyrex are like my two favorite people to really work with. Okay. Is anybody else missing? Can't really think of. Those are, those are the two new generations of just this coast of music alone. Yeah. For sure. So I feel like sure. that's and and your sound fits perfectly in there. It's like a glove, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I, I feel like th- those are good answers. I feel Great like those answers. are good answers. Okay. Um, talk about talk about sometimes. What do you, what do you, I know you since you said you're not you're not always you're not always making beats or in a studio or engineering. Mm-hmm. What do what do you do from your daily routine? Uh, so normally I would you know probably go on my walk, wake you know wake up go on my walk and work out and. And I would just come back home, either make some beats mm-hmm. or um, come up with some new ideas on some events, you know, that I could mm-hmm. be playing in or what I can curate into my events, like as far as DJing. Or I'll work on some crates, work on some music for my DJing. Mm-hmm. Or just, you know, make beats and probably go to the studio, do a session real quick, something okay. like that. My days is really just like up in the air. Mm-hmm. But that's, but those, those are like, that's what I normally do. Mm-hmm. Like those are the best, those, those are the best type of days to have. Like you, you have you have the freedom to create. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the best. Those are the best situations are for creatives. You know, I mean, most most creatives, it's not good for them. Like you know, to be going to work all the time, and you know, we got to do this and that. Like it's yeah. better to just just give them an empty space and let them create. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you know, it, it don't never hurt to go. You know, get a job and get some money. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't did it plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm you know I'm doing it now, but. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 really all about you know how bad you want it. You know what I'm mm. saying? Go do that and then come back, take a breather, take a break, and then go be creative for the rest of the day. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's all about it it's all about managing your time and finding the best time for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's not exactly. gonna hit the same for everybody. Exactly. Um, talk about what what's what's going on. What what can we expect from you? Um. You can expect some more. Uh, expect definitely expect another plaque on the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be another It's going to be Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. What are you talking it's about? It's going to be Bonnie and Clyde. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because that's going to be the next play. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and now and then if and then if it, if it get a plaque, then I should get a plaque too because I, I predicted it. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure he get a plaque too. Oh, we up, Shorty. We are gonna put it right there. Yeah, right there in the back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, shoot, I'm doing uh, me and my man's trap. We DJing for the Orioles opening day. <sighs> I saw uh, that. That's yeah. that's that's crazy. That's gonna be big. I might have to be there. I might have to be there. You there. gotta be there. Yeah. You gotta be there. That's big. That's on the way. Uh, shoot. What else we got on the way? Uh, I'm dropping. I'm dropping my own mixtape before the year over. Oh, so, uh, producing or you gonna be rapping? I'm um no producing, but I'm gonna have the artists on there. Mm. There'll be like you know features. You got the name on it? Can you drop the name? Uh, chosen one. The chosen, chosen one tape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you know I like saying? that. But I'm gonna do a whole rollout with it, so it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. Definitely gonna be big. Especially if Py- Pyrex gonna be on there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's gonna be big then. It's good. Hell yeah. That's all it's I need gonna to be know. a lot of major artists. On okay, there. great. So I'm gonna do that. It's gonna make that happen. That's really about it, though. Shit. Um, any questions you got for me or anything? Any more questions? Um, how long you been doing this? Oh, I've been doing this. I've been doing this since like. I started a podcast in like 2019. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, I kind of started it as like a just a just journaling and like documenting my life and the people I like talking to, and then just kind of evolved into I get to talk to cool people like you. Ah, that's what's up. So that's kind of how it is, and that's how it's gonna be. I like this man. It's a nice setup. Then you know I got my girl on the ones and twos, so it's yeah. a whole it's shout all in out, house. This girl, man, she yeah, ain't not like having that partner. This mm-hmm. this is it. This is how you do it, man. Yep. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no dirty niggas in, in New Balances around here. Yeah, <laughs> so, nah, not at all. It's, it's nice and clean. Yeah, you can, you, put it together. you can tell. No, last time, it's a, you see that footprint on the wall over there? That's the last time I had some niggas in there. I was taking a picture, and nigga, don't you know how you put your foot on the wall? Yeah, the nigga hit one of those. Oh, I see it. Oh yeah, yeah you had yeah, you had them um, the ones that be on this side of town out here. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm already knowing. I'm already knowing. Um, if it, the last question that I have for you, what do you think about the music state in Baltimore? Like, um, it's growing. Mm. It's definitely growing into being its own sound. You know, what I'm saying being its own wave. Um, you know, we Baltimore always had a sense of versatility. Like we already, you know, we always had. Um, different artists that can you know make their own wave mm-hmm. but it was just about the exposure that was always missing you know what mm. i'm saying i do feel like we're at a um feel like we're at a place where the stock in baltimore is definitely going a little higher hell you know yeah saying? it's going people, up people are looking at baltimore like okay they got this artist and that artist and this person coming out of there like and we're definitely starting to become our own little yeah we just need we just with. need niggas to stop going to jail that's it. Stop beefing. And get along, it, bro. That's it. That's I mean, it. Everybody just, it's really, it's really either a love or a survival thing. It's got to be a little more love than survival. Once no. we figure that out and we actually start putting a little more love into like each other and what we do, Baltimore be great. We are gonna be fine. It'll be great. We, we got, we got the art. We got the talent. We got all that. We just got to put more, put a little more love behind it. That's it. I think so too. That's it. A little more love and care. Um. Well, thank you for coming to the show. Um, you definitely welcome to come back. I definitely want you back when you drop the album. For sure. No, I definitely come back. I appreciate you for having me. That's man. great. Um, yeah. Until next time, guys. Thank you for the show. Um, until next guy. Bye. Bye. Um, I don't really have an outro. Um, I just kind of just say bye. Just welcome. I got an outro. Appreciate y'all for tapping in with Blaze Network. Yes, it Mr. is. Mr. Blaze himself. Yes, it is. Mr. Tip Twelve, the hottest DJ in the city. The coolest producer in the world. Bow. Bow.